I have for you today kind of stinks. No, literally. This is William the Backward Skunk by the great Chuck Jones. And if you're not familiar with Chuck Jones, you probably will recognize him when you see the illustrations. Chuck Jones was uh, an animator and uh, he worked a lot with Warner Brothers, created uh, Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote, worked on Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck. So he was a very famous cartoonist. And anyway, this is a book that I grew up with that my grandmother read to me. And uh, I'm not sure how she discovered it, but it was, it came out in 1986, so I was two. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, it, it's written and illustrated by Chuck Jones, and it's called William the Backward Skunk. So let's go. William was a skunk. He lived out in the country like all other skunks. William was small and cute and shy, like all other skunks, and he had a rather strong perfume, like all other skunks. Which he looks a lot like a, a famous Chuck Jones creation for cartoons. He looks like Pepe Le Pew, who was a French skunk. But while all other skunks have a stripe running down the back, William's stripe ran down his front not at all like other skunks. From a distance, no one could tell he was a skunk, not even a fox, and foxes are supposed to be very smart. Until he got very close. <laughs> Love that drawing. And he got a whiff of William's perfume and then discovered his mistake. And he's running off into the distance. Yeah, he got, he got, he got, he got. <laughs> There was also a hungry bear who made the same mistake. And a panther. <laughs> it was all terribly confusing to them. They became afraid to attack a squirrel or a chipmunk or even a woodchuck because any one of them might be a backward skunk. Finally, in desperation, all the big animals called a meeting. They had to do something. They wrote a letter and they sent it airmail to William. And uh, there's a letter here. He actually illustrates it. It says, Mr. William Skunk, we the undersigned feel that you should do something about your personal appearance. You do not look like a skunk, yet you smell like a skunk. We are afraid to try and catch anybody for breakfast. It might be you. Please try to cooperate by making yourself look like a self-respecting skunk. Otherwise, we will starve. Sincerely, Grizzle E. Bear, Sanford Panther, and Fred Fox Jr. So, now this was all news to William, but he certainly didn't want to be the cause of anybody starving. So, he decided to do what he could do about putting a stripe down his back. But the whitewash washed right off in the first rain, and when he tried adhesive tape, disaster. He even tried walking on his back so his stripe would show, but then he couldn't see where he was going. Then one day, in a discarded magazine, he saw an ad. 
It said, Acme Guaranteed Skunk Stripes. Send for a free sample. So he sent for the free sample, and in due time it was delivered, also by airmail. William read the instructions carefully. Always a good idea. When a squirrel came down a nearby tree to see what was going on. A squirrel with a bad cold and a stuffed up nose. He couldn't smell William, but he could question him. Squirrel with a cold. So William told him the story, the whole story. And the squirrel said, Look. If you put a stripe down your back like all other skunks, all those fierce animals will start eating us again. It, he also told William how happy the little animals were now that nobody was eating them for breakfast. And he told William of a plan that he'd thought up to keep the little animals from ever having to worry about being breakfast again. William thought it was a wonderful idea, and they set up shop in a large, old hollow tree. <laughs> so, the very next morning, squirrels, chipmunks, field mice, and other little animals lined up. Sign uh, line forms here for anyone who is tired of being eaten for breakfast. They all went into the hollow tree as squirrels, chipmunks, and other little animals, but when they came out, they all came out looking like skunks. This was too much for the bear, the fox, and the panther. They all went away, far away actually, looking for a part of the country where there are no backward skunks. And nobody ever ate anybody again, at least not in that part of the forest. Well, that's the story of William the Backward Skunk by Chuck Jones. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, come back for more stories soon. Have a good day, folks.